Hi, my name's Luke, and I've got a photography blog over at lukezine.com, and I'm an Australian, so don't hold that against me. But currently I've just been posting photo of the day blogs each day, and I'll just post a photo, talk a little bit how I made it, and then the story behind the image, and just a few things like that. Maybe some editing information, software I used. But I'm going to start a new series today in my tutorial section. It's just going to be a tip of the week. And this one is the first one, and it's going to be about how I use Camera Raw in my HDR workflow. Normally people use Camera Raw when they're opening up an image in Photoshop. I've worked out a way that I can use it in my HDR workflow sort of further down the track. So what I've done, I've gone ahead and used Photomatics Pro to create this tone mapped image from these five images here. I'll just show them in Lightroom. This is a little village in Japan, Arashiyama, and it's about 30 minute train ride from Kyoto. You can see here the trees are just starting to change color. It's actually a really beautiful little town. You can see all the fog in the mountains. It's a Sunday, everyone's here just having a look around in these little shops. You've got these little um, man pulled touring carts and they'll run you around town. It's got their cool little Japanese hats. Anyway, so I've combined those images into this tone mapped image with Photomatix. And the way I would normally work is I would take the five images plus the tone mapped image into Photoshop, load them as layers, and I'd just mask in elements from each layer to help make the tone mapped image more realistic. It's already pretty realistic, but I like to, you know, create an artwork with mine more than a photograph. Cameras are a little bit different to the human eye and using software to help them get closer to that scene that you saw and that you've got in your memory. So for the sake of the tutorial, I won't go through with my brush and edit in elements from each image. I'm just going to collapse it and say that, yeah, I went through it all. So let's collapse that with Control E. So now I'm going to show you how I would use Camera Raw to maybe remove chromatic aberration and possibly I could add a gradient filter, a vignette, all types of things like that. Some people might like to go back into Lightroom for that, but if you can just stay here and do it, why not? So you need Mini Bridge for this, and it's under Window Extensions Mini Bridge. Now I've already put mine down here on the bottom of the screen, and I can show you how to do that. Normally it might pop up over here in one of these columns, or you might have other columns in your Photoshop setup but it will come up like this. Let's close that by double clicking that. So to put it on the bottom, you just grab the icon, drag it down here and see when you get that blue line, now let go. Now see the mini bridge text here? Just double clicking that is how you open up the extension. So what we are going to do You'll want to save this initially, let's say, save as, in the folder I'm working as, a TIFF. And you keep layers in this one. So let's call this uh, Japanese Village. Save. And that should just pop up. Here. Yeah, there it is. Now what I like to do is save a second TIFF because I've found that removing chromatic aberration can actually change the overall color of the image, not just on the uh, edges. So let's save another one. Let's call this uh, our edit one. Okay. So, to be able to open up the image in Camera Raw, you actually need to close it. 
So make sure you've saved all your settings and then just close the image. Now go down to the one you want to open in Camera Raw. Let's choose our edit one. Open with Camera Raw. A couple of things off the bat that you could do uh, to make it look more realistic is drop your highlights, increase your whites, and drop your blacks. This is going to give it a quick adjustment to make it look real. Come over to lens correction up here and color is the section you want. So you can just click remove chromatic aberrations automatically. You can see this uh, dirty blob that happens in HDR but they're easy to remove in Photoshop. So let's try that and see how we go. And it's taken away a lot of the red and green. But there's still a little bit of red here and I want to try and get rid of that. So we're going to manual mode now. We'll just bring up purple and bring this slider across. There we go. You can still see a little bit of green in here. So we're just going to manually adjust that. You can see how it brought a little bit more red back, so there's the option to adjust that as well. And we're just kind of working with our sliders till we get this right. I mean, it's pretty good compared to how bad it was. And that's just a process from the HDR chain mapping. But it can happen from some lenses as well. Yeah, let's go with that. If you were wanting to make some other adjustments in here, uh, you might come back and use, say, gradient filter. Just quickly show you the vignette while we're here. So it's just on effects and you might just drop the amount and you can see I'll do it dramatically so you can see how it works. Feather is where you blur it out. But I won't put on that because it will interfere with showing you how I'm going to remove the chromatic aberration. So let's open up and now we're in Photoshop and you can see it's taken away a lot of it but it may have changed the color of the image and it might not be as noticeable in this one because all the various greens and oranges but it might be in others so just to show you how I might remove that I go open this other one that we didn't edit the original just close the mini bridge to get this working. Just double click the padlock. Now I want to select this whole image simply and take it over to this one. So I'd go Control A which is select all, Control C to copy it to my clipboard, come over here, unlock the layer and just paste it in so that's Control V. So we want to just show you the impact that we had with our changes. So here is our layer that where we have the chromatic aberration and to hide it you can see the difference. But also have a look here in this this uh, part of the pine tree and see how the color changed slightly. That's what I don't like. So I'll show you how I do this. I'm just going to add a layer mask. Use my brush. And you can manually go in, just go in whatever, 190. And paint them out like that. That way you can keep the color of your image and just remove chromatic aberration. Usually you're just going to see it where a dark object meets a really bright object. So in this case it's the tree and the sky. Uh, 
and see the mask. You can see where I'm doing that. So I just go across the horizon here and remove all of that. Then after you're done, you'd collapse them together and just continue with your editing. I might start using filters from uh, on one. I always use my suite, Photo Suite 7, and I use uh, Topaz a lot as well. So thanks, I hope you enjoyed uh, tip one and hopefully next week I can upload tip two for you.